Hello, Tim Ives from the Scarborough Church. How are you? That is a beautiful sight, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, spring coming out, spring coming out in all kinds of different ways. We've had some uh, pretty cold days uh, the last few, but you know, the, the, the flowers, the early flowers have gotten going, so it's, it's okay because that preserves them. If it, if it gets hot and, then, and stays hot, everything goes too quickly. So I do like to hang on to spring <laughs> uh, and uh, make sure I enjoy every moment. I hope everyone's well. I hope some, everyone's taking care of themselves. I hope as we come down this other side of the uh, COVID problem, if you will, uh, we continue to uh, be safe, but continue to move in a direction where uh, life gets back to life and that we continue to do those things that give us life and give others life because that's what uh, really matters and really helps and uh, makes life what it should be. This is good news from the Scarborough Church and we do this on Wednesdays at noon. Uh, listen to a little music, meditative music. Uh, I thought that one was really good. And uh, we also pray for people and we uh, we read the Bible, which I think is always worth doing. So let's, let's get to it. I'm glad you're here. God bless each and every one of you. Let's take a look at that daffodil again. Very nice. So we're in the Gospel of John. Um, what you should know about this story is that this happens, you know, context is everything. Remember, context is everything. Uh, you don't know what a Bible story means until you know the context. Uh, many people want to take out a word here, a phrase there, a sentence there, and say, see, see, it means this. But if you don't know the story, if you don't know the context, if you don't know where it came from, um, then it, you really can't uh, get at what it means. Now this is in John, after the feeding of the multitude, and um, uh, that is uh, very important to know because if you don't know that, uh, you, don't, you won't know what Jesus is saying here um, uh, towards the end. So, uh, as, as I always say, context is everything. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not gotten into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. God bless this reading to our use. Amen. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we give thanks, we give thanks to be gathered in your name, we give thanks for your spirit. Help us to lean on that spirit, seek out that spirit, 
put on that spirit always in uh, your name so that we might do your will. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of our shared God, amen. All right, so the issue here, the thing that's going on, and as Jesus is always pointing out, like when he sat with the woman at the well, the Syrophoenician woman at the well, the Canaanite woman at the well, depending on what um, uh, version of, of uh, the gospel you have. Um, Jesus is pointing out uh, the difference between uh, one's spirit and one's reality. Now, in this modern world, we sort of focus a lot on the reality or our sense of what reality is. And spirit isn't exactly um, the most important or essential part of our reality. And, uh, you know, there are lots of people who are uh, interested in the spirit. There's a lot of people who seek the spirit. There's lots of people who want a spiritual life. But most of the time, we discount that as something secondary, something that, well, well if we get around to it, we'll, we'll focus on that. What we really need to focus on is the reality of our lives. The, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the success of our lives, the, the work of our lives, uh, the stuff that sustains us physically, uh, like uh, we go to work, we, we get a paycheck, we buy food, we buy uh, a house or an apartment, we pay for an apartment, a place to live, and, you know, those are the, those are the first needs right, of our lives, and they seem to be the most essential, the most important uh, part of what we're doing. And most of us, all of us, will spend a lot more time on that. Just think about how many hours you spend at work <coughs> um, in, ordering, in order to uh, maintain uh, the physical comfort of your life and how much, compared to how much time you spend on the spiritual maturity that you might have. Now, Jesus is always pointing out that, that we got that all flip-flopped. And it wasn't just in modern times, it was in his times too, because otherwise, why would he be talking about it? And he, he points out again and again uh, that there is a more important focus than just what you will eat and what you will drink and where you will stay. And he points this out again and again. It is a major theme of Jesus' ministry. Well, uh, for a lot of us, we'll go, well, okay, um, I, I understand that spirit is important, but, uh, you know, what am I going to do if I, you know, if I can't pay the rent? And it's legitimate. Um, I'm reading this book uh, right now. It's called This Tender Land. The guy's from Minnesota, the guy who wrote it. But it takes place in 1932 in rural Minnesota. And talk about a time when, when people didn't have a lot of anything. I mean, just regular people. A lot of people uh, uh, had, you know, were in situations where their farm had failed, they lost their job, and they didn't have a place to live. They didn't... You know, it was, um, it was a very difficult time. And, you know, they're always very worried about where the next meal will come from because they don't know. They don't know, but we're not any less worried about that because we spend a lot of time securing that um, uh, to the deprivation of our spirits, or so Jesus says. Uh, but, um, you know, it's that whole thing, you know, uh, I'll, I'll think about the spirit after, you know, I've eaten my fill. Uh, but Jesus, as I said, this is a theme of, of what he says, and this is why it's important to our physical selves. This is why it's important to our realities, because in our lives, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, um, uh, whatever we're trying to accomplish, it often 
is determined by the depth and strength of our spirits. Like we can't accomplish anything without faith. We can't do anything without faith. And even going to work, uh, if we don't have a, a spiritual self to sort of give us the resource. And when there's trouble in our lives, we don't have the spiritual resource to get back up. If we, if we, the, the people living in 1932, um, much of the strength didn't come from, you know, having a good 401k. It came from just the ability to get themselves up again one more time. The spiritual strength. And this is where we can be challenged all the time and, and uh, we see, we can uh, feel like all is lost. And if we don't have a strong spiritual connection to God, if we don't have a strong spiritual connection in our lives, uh, you know, the reality, the physical, the, what we think of as the realness of life can be easily lost. So that is why Jesus says, no, put your spirit first. Put your relationship with God first. And then uh, everything else will follow. And that's what happens in this. And that's, and that's the question that Jesus has here. Um, they've seen the feeding of the multitude these people trying to find Jesus, they've seen that, and they think that's pretty darn cool. They think that is exactly what they need. They think that is, is uh, exactly um, uh, what they uh, need in their lives. You know, some, um, <clears throat> some thing that delivers food something that delivers uh, shelter, some, you know, all those physical details they need worked out for themselves. But Jesus says, no, that isn't what you need. Did you come looking for me because you ate your fill? I got something better than that. And what he calls it um, is, uh, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son will give you. Uh, what's he talking about that? He's talking about your spiritual life. He's talking about that part of you that is essential for the rest of life. Talking about the, that which comes before the reality, the physical reality that you are about. Because uh, if, you, uh, if you are challenged in the physical world, there is... Um, there is a resource, and that is your spiritual resource. It's God in your life to help you. Uh, and Jesus says, if you don't have that, sooner or later, you know, the food's going to run out, or, you know, your sense of meaning is going to run out. You're living in this world in a way that that is only about uh, keeping your physical, that's going to run out as, as to being a reason to keep living. And Jesus says, if you don't have that, um, you know, that food that endures for eternal life, your spiritual part, that food that nourishes you in a way that helps you uh, move through even the hardest challenge, you're lost. So Jesus tells us, get your spiritual self together. Get your connection with God together. Work on uh, the, your, your faith life so that you will have the resource to truly live this life. Otherwise, it's just, you know, it's just a drudge going to work, coming home. There's nothing really that there isn't, <laughs> there isn't a depth to it. But um, as you become acquainted with your own spirit, as you become acquainted with the God that is in your life, the depth of your life increases immeasurably. And each day can be the abundant event that Jesus and God uh, wants it to be for every one of us. In Christ Jesus, amen. Well, that is, a, that is a very encouraging word, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, too. So let's take just a moment to uh, 
think about God's abundant presence in our lives. You know, a little music. Another thing we do is we pray for one another. Is there anything more important than that? I'm sure there is, but uh, I think it's pretty important. And part of, part of uh, uh, building our essential spiritual selves is prayer. So, um, so that's what we do, and it's such a nice thing to do for someone. It doesn't take that much. I am happy to say that uh, yesterday, was Ann Lasus's birthday. So we're going to say a little prayer for her and uh, thank God that, that she's a part of our lives. And uh, Don Rosardi asks that we uh, pray for Rosemary James moving into assisted living and Christy King, who is um, very sick, uh, two children, husband, um, and uh, is very sick with cancer. So we'll we will pray for her. And my friend Jane Suddendorf, whose cancer has returned, uh, talk about challenging. Hmm. Gita's friend Sue, uh, we'll pray for her. Lynn's, uh, uh, Lynn Hudden's mom, who was in the hospital, out of the hospital, still has to have surgery. Doug Barnard ha has leukemia and has a, a long uh, program ahead to fight that leukemia. Uh, Esther Phelps, who has cancer, uh, uh, Michelle Croft, who uh, is recovering, uh, Corinne, that's Lucy's friend, who is uh, very challenged with care for her elderly parents, uh, Terry DeTore, Pat DeSpirito, Sean Curran, uh, doctors and nurses everywhere. Uh, including Gita, just down at the hospital here. It's so overworked. I hope that uh, everyone is uh, being helped in some way, uh, being overworked. Uh, hmm. And we all, as always, we pray for peace and we pray for justice. Also wanted to mention, and we'll include her in the prayers, that last year on March 20th, um, Barbara Dever died, and uh, she was a uh, lay minister here. 
uh, it had wonderful ministry to the prison and, uh, and was a wonderful minister to me and, and a lot of people here. So uh, we, are, uh, we are grateful for her. We're very sad uh, for her death a year ago and there will be a memorial service on Saturday the 20th um, at one o'clock. If you want the Zoom invite, let me know. 914-645-1482. So let us pray. Oh Lord, we give thanks. We give thanks for all good gifts. We give thanks uh, for Anne. We give thanks for her presence among us. We give thanks for all the ways that uh, she uh, lifts us up. And we give thanks for her art and her creative spirit. We pray for Rosemary James. Uh, we ask that you be with her now in this transition, be with Christy King and her family. And uh, we pray for Jane and Gita and Sue, uh, Lynn Hudden's mom, Doug, Esther, Michelle, Corinne, Terry, Pat, Sean, doctors and nurses, medical staff everywhere. Uh, we pray for peace, we pray for justice, and we pray for our friend Barbara. Oh Lord, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. When we reach out to you, help us to always open our hearts to you, that we might always remember how very important it is that, that we are here with you. Um, we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, uh, we have church on Sunday at 1130. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, let me know. Like us on Facebook, like us or follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and uh, be well, everybody. Many blessings to all of you. Amen.